Arriving at Wellington today after four years overseas is a draft from the Middle East. Right now, most of them are thinking it's bloody good to see the old place again and are wondering what the beer's like and if New Zealand women look the same. But ahead of them all is a problem, the problem of settling down, of turning themselves from soldiers back to civilians again. The official name for it is rehabilitation. first excitement's over, these men have to make up their minds what they're going to do. For some it's the old job and no worries, but for others it's difficult. Some have never had a decent job, and others can't take up the old one now. It's to help these chaps that there's a rehabilitation department. Every man, Maori or Pākehā, who's been in the services, whether he comes back fit or wounded, rehab will help him to get back on civilian feet. The government and people of New Zealand want every man who has served in Army, Navy or Air Force to be as well off in civilian life as if the war had never uprooted him. That's a big order, but it's what the rehabilitation department is out to do, and it applies to women as well. If a man can improve his position through rehab assistance, that's okay with everybody. And after all, how a man does settle down depends in the long run on the man himself. First step toward civvies for a returned man is an interview with the district rehabilitation officer. Here he discusses future plans and finds out generally where he stands. If a chap is laid up, a rehab officer comes to see if he can be of any assistance. It enables him to do some down-to-earth planning while still in bed. Major headache for a lot of returned men is finding somewhere to live. At the present time, housing is the national headache, the principal difficulty being shortage of skilled manpower. Everything is being done to catch up, and these are new state houses going up at the hut. The building trade offers one of the best openings for returned men, and since September 43, the rehab department has been operating training schools for carpenters. There are 15 of them now, including one at Rotorua, especially for Maori trainees. With the country so short of houses, a trained carpenter, painter, plumber or bricklayer is assured of a good seven pounds a week for years to come. Servicemen can get the training through rehab and be paid decent wages while learning. Building houses is one thing, getting into them is another, but ex-servicemen are especially favoured. Of all state houses completed, 50% are allotted to returned men, irrespective of the civilian waiting list. This airman and his family are among the 3,000 who've got houses this way. For people setting up house, rehab is also willing to grant free of interest loans for furniture. For those who prefer to own a home, rehab will lend up to 1,500 pounds for the building or purchasing of a house. Alan Shackelford reckons rehab is a good thing, and so does Don Hadfield. Both these men have built their houses, while the Coveneys bought a ready-made one. Right now, they're trying to figure out how a revolving clothesline goes together. They didn't use this type in the Navy. In addition to the special schools for the building trade, training can be obtained under a wages subsidy scheme. This former air gunner is learning glass beveling on the earn as you learn system. And this ex-medical corpsman is learning piano tuning. The rehabilitation department will subsidize the wages of any eligible ex-serviceman who wants to learn a trade and for whom an employer can be found. Wages under this scheme start at 5.15 a week, and the number of trades and occupations where on-the-job training operates is nearly 150. If you want to start a business, rehab will back you up. These two cobbers from the 25th Battalion have started up a boy's pants factory, and they're doing well. For ventures like this, experience and business ability are necessary. And if a man has the know-how, rehab will lend him 500 pounds. In deciding who is loan worthy, the department is guided by rehabilitation committees of local residents. So if you want to be a mercer or a grocer and know something about it, rehab will give you every chance. 
Active service was a serious setback for students, and trying to make up the leeway of five lost years is what this science student is doing. Rehab is assisting by paying fees and lending books. For a lot of soldiers, sailors and airmen, farming appears to be the ideal occupation in the post-war world. As far as humanly possible, the rehabilitation department will help them to achieve their wish. If a man is fit enough, young enough and keen enough, he can become a farmer. At this training farm, ex-servicemen are learning to be farmers and they're being paid for doing it. As well as the training farms, experience can be obtained with individual farmers, wages being subsidized as in trade training. When a man gets an A-grade farming certificate, rehab will finance him on a farm. To meet the demand for land, the government has bought up large estates for closer settlement. On some blocks, servicemen are carrying out the necessary improvements on a wage basis, and later will take over the farms as going concerns. Another aspect of farm training is free tuition at the agricultural colleges. Here, men are attending a lecture on farm economics. Farm engineering is a useful course, which is well attended at Massey College. These days, a farmer has to be as good an engineer as he is carpenter, businessman, chemist, veterinary surgeon, weather prophet, biologist, and what have you. Wool classing is also very popular. Future farmers find that there's quite a lot to learn about wool, and others see in wool classing a congenial job. Rehab is prepared to lend money for any sound farming venture. This ex-fighter pilot has a farmlet outside Palmerston North and is making a specialty of poultry. The ducks and geese are his wife's specialty, and this former English waif takes to this life as the ducks do to the water. A cow or two keeps them supplied with butter and milk, as well as rounding out the family budget. To get a farm on his own, with rehab assistance, as this chap has, a man must be a fully qualified farmer. If the farm he wants to buy is an economic and manageable one-man unit, rehab will advance him the necessary money, and for stock and implements as well. But for the protection of the serviceman and of the taxpayer, who after all is footing the bill, it does insist before it will play that the particular farm is a paying proposition. Before going overseas, many soldiers were called on for harvesting. This is a scene in a Nelson apple orchard at that time. Some of the chaps decided that an orchardist's life was a good one, and if they're still of that opinion and want to own an orchard or a hop garden, rehab is willing to pay for their training, and when trained, to set them up. Tobacco farming was another outdoor occupation where soldiers obtained harvesting experience and another farming venture which rehab is prepared to finance. Viticulture, that is wine making, is yet another prospect, but opportunities will not be as numerous as in tobacco. All these schemes are for the fit, they are the disabled as well. For them, there are the disabled servicemen's training centers. This is the Wellington one. Cabinet making is a trade where disabled men have long been proficient. Printing, this is handsetting, is another trade where they can become skilled. These centers are administered by the Disabled Servicemen's Reestablishment League, and they have rehab's moral and financial backing. Watchmaking is a trade where leg or body injuries are no disadvantage, and it's one that has good prospects. Another draft is home, and they're glad to be back. For these men, there are the same prospects of getting started in civilian life as those in the last draft. With rehab, it's not a case of first home best served. It's a case of equal consideration for all with overseas service. 
The people of New Zealand are proud of their fighting men and of their fighting record. And the fighting men can feel proud of the people of New Zealand, for they've devised and they're backing the best rehabilitation scheme in the world. No other country has one that is as comprehensive or as generous. Rehab is for your benefit, Kiwi. Use it and use it well. Thank you.